All right, I'm going to go ahead and get it started. This is a presentation about Zikki. Zikki is like a shell console, but better. The homepage is zikki.org. That's x i k i dot org. The, Z, the X is pronounced like a Z. Uh, this window that I'm doing a presentation from is Zikki enabled. And the whole presentation is going to be a live demo of <laughs> Zikki. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the uh, three guiding principles of Zikki are uh, very straightforward. You need an editable uh, plain text area, and uh, you can type whatever you want. You can type wherever you want, and you can type whatever you want. Uh, Zikki does a lot of stuff and can be used in uh, many different ways. But if you get these three points and their implications, then you get Zikki. So this window satisfies these three points. It's a big editable plain text area. You can see it's plain text when I toggle the formatting. The formatting is optional and just based on patterns. Uh, point two, you can type wherever you want. I could type up here, I can type up here, I can type here. And point three, you can type whatever you want. I could type pigs fly and no one can stop me from doing it. So are these three points stating the obvious? Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, standard text editor. These three points apply to pretty much every text editor. Uh, editable text, you can type whatever you want, wherever you want. So show of hands, who thinks uh, these three points are uh, stating the obvious? Cool, I do. I do. Uh, in the context of text editor windows, they're very much stating the obvious. Um, but how about in the context of other things? Like how about in the context of a shell console? Are these three points stating the obvious? Uh, well, with point one, uh, shell consoles are pretty much plain text uh, areas, but you can't just edit whatever you want. Uh, you can't type wherever you want. You're limited to the single active prompt at the bottom, and you can't type whatever you want. Uh, you have to type shell commands if you want to do anything useful. So in the context of shell consoles, these three points very much are not stating something that's obvious. So why do I say that Zikki is like a shell console but better? Uh, well, we all know how shell consoles work. You type commands at the single active prompt at the bottom, you press enter, and the results are appended read only, and when you're done, you've got a bunch of read only output, and you can use the up arrow and control R to rerun commands, et cetera. Uh, well, this isn't bad. Shell consoles will work pretty well, but let's see if we can improve on this a little bit. What would happen if we applied these three guiding principles of Zikki to shell consoles? Uh, editable plain text area, type wherever, type whatever. Well, what if, in your shell console, instead of only being able to type commands at the prompt at the bottom, you could make a prompt anywhere just by typing a dollar sign? What if you could double click on a command to run it or move your cursor onto a command and type control enter to run it? What if you could double click again to, uh, to collapse a command and double click again to rerun a command as many times as you wanted to? Or move your cursor onto the command and type control enter to rerun it and to collapse? What if you could edit commands and collapse them and rerun them? What if when you ran commands, you could optionally type uh, letters to incrementally narrow down the output to just the part you cared about? What if everything was editable, so you could edit the part of the output that you don't care about, and you could add arbitrary notes, like check out these files, or uh, fix this one. Oops, fix this. Uh, one. Uh, what if everything was plain text, so you could save the stuff that you type into files and use the files later to look at your notes and to rerun the commands or share the files with other people so that they can look at your notes and they can run the commands? Uh, what if you could see commands in specific directories that you've run and typed to narrow down and uh, rerun commands rather than the, uh, you know, total lists of commands you run in all directories, like with bash. What if you could uh, type other stuff, like Ruby code, 
What if you could type Ruby code and double click to see the output? What if you could type Ruby methods on classes that you create and double click to see the output? What if you could type words that you could map to classes that you create and double click on them to invoke the class and show the output? What if you could define new words just by dragging simple Ruby files into your home directory, into a directory named menu. Oops. Uh, zoom back out. And then what if you could type the name of the class you just dragged in and double click to invoke the class and see the output. What if you could type paths to files and then uh, navigate the file system with your mouse or with the keyboard and open files. What if you could type SQL statements and double click to see the output and type to narrow down or edit the uh, text in line and double click again to save back to the database. Thank you. What if you could type Ruby code in the context of other Ruby apps, like Rails, for example, and double click, and if the output is active record, why not be able to double click on that and save? And why if, what, what if, the, uh, <laughs> what if the, the code ran in the actual server so you could interact with the request in the user session, unlike IRB and Rails console? What if you could type URLs and double click to bring them up in the web browser. Um, let me uh, make that a little smaller so you guys can see uh, Zicky behind it. What if you could type JavaScript and double click on it to run it in the context of the browser? You can see it updating over here on the left. What if you could type DOM and double click on that to drill into the uh, browser, into the DOM? and make changes to the uh, file. You can see it blink up here when I edit it. <laughs> what if you could search in the DOM and double click and drill into a specific section and edit it? What if you could type bootstrap and use a wiki-ish uh, simple, simple syntax to make headings and double click to see uh, preview and sentences. And what if you could make uh, multiple sections, which is kind of the sweet spot of bootstrap, and double click to see that. And what if you could uh, make multi-column layouts, which uh, really is the sweet spot of bootstrap just by sandwiching sections together. What if with Bootstrap and other frameworks, you could double click and be guided through uh, some examples that you could, look, that you could use as uh, beginning points to get started really quickly and then edit them uh, and see the changes? What if you could create and run Rails apps uh, using menus and generate stuff like resources and be shown default values that you could get started with what if you could type node and other uh, app servers and be given a default controller and have it start up a server for you? And then when you uh, make changes, have it uh, update the server and show you in your browser. What if you could renew, uh, review and navigate uh, git diffs and navigate to the files and uh, group a couple files together and commit them? What if you could navigate and run unit tests and double click to jump to the point where it failed? What if you could browse and edit databases like MySQL, Memcache, MongoDB, uh, browser local storage, and update them? What if when a menu didn't exist and you double clicked on it, it would walk you through creating the menu in line? Uh, this first option says create here, let's double click on that. It's telling us we can just create a couple of menu items in line and it tells us a keyboard shortcut, which you can see if I wrap, that we can type to save the menu. So let's add uh, eggs and milk and type that keyboard shortcut. And then if we type 
shopping lists uh, anywhere that menu is defined. What if when you double click on a menu that doesn't exist, you have an option to create a class, which is the second option here, and it gives you a default class and tells you a keyboard shortcut to type, and then the next time you expand the menu, it invokes that code. What if you could put uh, wiki elements under menus by using uh, special characters, like greater than for a heading, uh, dash for a bullet point, uh, more space for nested bullet points, et cetera. What if you could type Ziki in your web browser and navigate menus with a mobile-like interface? Here's one with a bootstrap layout. What if you could do fun stuff like type a few uh, musical notes and uh, send them to a MIDI app like GarageBand? And what if you could even randomize notes using a little DSL? with Ziki. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at how you install Ziki. Since Ziki requires only an editable text area, its ideal environment to run in is a text editor or an IDE. Uh, really, anything with a big editable text area that's extendable, that usually means a text editor or sometimes an IDE. So Ziki is like a shell console, but Ziki really is a text editor plugin most of the time. Uh, so you can Ziki enable your text editor. You might be wondering why not make it an actual uh, binary shell like Bash or like iTerm perhaps. And that uh, can be interesting, but you kind of have two options. You can extend existing editors like Ziki does, or you could write your own and then you know, deal with file management, deal with keyboard shortcuts, deal with OS integration, um, but you probably wouldn't be able to do that as well as existing text edit editors already do it in existing IDEs. So to me, uh, option one is the, the clear winner. Uh, this augmenting existing tools, I think, is an interesting path to, to explore versus competing with them. Uh, and since Ziki runs in a text editor, it can take advantage of text editor features that consoles can't really do, like saving stuff into text files to use later, doing search and replacing on the output of commands or on the commands themselves before you run them. Uh, Multi-line input is awkward to do in, in shell consoles, but in a uh, menu that you want to pass multiple lines to in a text area, that's not an issue. Uh, undo is interesting to have in the context of running commands. Swapping lines, this is something that's not obvious at first. Uh, here's the syntax for running a couple commands in, the, uh, uh, in, in these directories. So you can double click to run these and if you want to run them in a different directory, you can just make this uh, directory be the root. This is the, uh, say it's your, production, your remote production site. Then you can double click on these to run the same commands in the same mirror directory structure on a remote server or another local directory. The supported text editors uh, right now, the, the most supported and the re most recommended is Aquamax. If you haven't heard of Aquamax, it's like Emacs, but it's super Mac friendly. It's based on Emacs, but it uh, lets you do Command Q to quit, Command C and Command V to copy and paste. Uh, it has a friendly menu bar. It lets you uh, hold down Shift and select and type to replace the selection. All the Mac ways of editing it. You'll be totally comfortable in it. Uh, you can use the mouse. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not on the Mac or, you don't, or you're familiar with Emacs, you might want to use just base Emacs. Uh, Aquamacs is actually 95% base on Emacs, but way easier to get started with. Uh, and the, for the Emacs versions of, of Ziki, it uses this awesome el Ferrar library written by Rubykitch, who's one of the core Ruby guys. And uh, it's really amazing. It uses it for the bridge between Ruby and, um, and Emacs. There's experimental support for Vim. Here is uh, me and Mac Vim typing IP and then 
or IP, and double clicking on it, you can see it shows the IP underneath. Uh, there's also experimental support for CodeMirror, which is a really nice uh, browser-based editor. I can uh, type IP and double click on it or control enter. I can type uh, a heading and begin it with a dollar sign, or, I'm sorry, with a angle bracket, a greater than sign, and it formats it. Uh, there's a guy in uh, Southern California who wrote uh, most of a red car plugin for Zicky, which is, which is awesome. Uh, other uh, editors, Sublime, some guy on the internet offered a $500 uh, uh, award for the first Zicky support for Sublime, which I didn't know all the details of that, but I thought that was really cool. TextMate, there's been a little progress on that. RubyMine is another obvious uh, target for being able to type Zicky stuff in. So the actual install instructions, if, uh, if I'm hooked up to the internet, which I guess I'm not, I could go to the GitHub homepage. Uh, here, I'll just go to the readme file in the Zicky homepage and insert all the contents and use the mark down menu and then double click on that and that'll render it in the browser. So these are the install instructions you'll find on the GitHub page. Uh, you can sudo gem install Zicky now as of uh, a couple months ago with some uh, awesome uh, help from some collaborators. I've got that working. It made the install for Zicky way, way nicer than it was before. Um, as soon as you run the gem install, you can, you can type Zicky on the command line. That'll give you just the base command line interface, which we'll look at later. Then you just uh, run a couple commands, add a couple lines to a config file, and if things go well, you'll be up and running. If not, join the Google group and um, tell us your problems and we'll get you through them. So once you've got Zicky installed, how do you use it? Uh, the easiest use case is to use it to replace or augment your shell console. And as you use commands, you'll probably be tempted to type in little notes because you can, and you'll start to, to build up notes. Um, experimenting with the web browser is a really fun uh, way, sort of like you saw in the intro, uh, which is similar to what you would do with Firebug or the uh, Chrome console, but when, you're, when you reload the page, it doesn't all go away. It stays in a text file, so you can use it again later and build up uh, notes. Trying out new tools and frameworks is kind of my favorite uh, use case for Zicky. You should be able to uh, type Node, Mongo, Bootstrap, SVG, any, uh, any interesting uh, framework you want on a blank line and double click and be guided through in, in uh, a few seconds, getting up and running with making things work and then being able to look at what you made. And it's possible to use Zicky as uh, a, an IDE to navigate files, run unit tests, uh, run shell consoles. Well, I've got a section on that. I don't know if we'll get to it. I don't know if we'll have enough time. Um, if you want to add Zicky support for your editor and you know how to extend your editor, you totally should. Uh, the way that works is you just have your editor shell out to the Zicky shell command. So for example, if uh, your user types IP, you write a plugin basically, that goes in and intercepts the double click or the control enter, and then you programmatically shell out to uh, the Zicky command and you pass it IP, the name of the menu, and then you just grab the output programmatically and insert it underneath, indent it over two spaces. For multi-line uh, examples, uh, same thing for the first level, you just insert that underneath. On the second level, you just climb the tree, because really when you're, when you're, the user is clicking on uh, pets, it's really animals slash pets, right? Just kind of like a file directory. So you pass animals slash pets to the Zicky command, and you grab the output and you insert it underneath. So if you know how to extend your editor, it's not, it's not tough to get basic Zicky support. So now let's uh, take a look at the inspiration for Zicky. I won't dwell on this too long, but uh, belated introduction. My name is Craig Muth. I've been working on Zicky off and on for about 11 years. I started out in Lisp, and then about seven years ago, I ported to uh, Ruby, and that gave me, I think, about a 3x productivity increase. Uh, Lisp is, is great for a lot of stuff, but Ruby is great for what Zicky does, in particular with the text processing and the, and the dynamic uh, OO stuff. So Zicky is starting to get some adoption, which is, which is amazing and awesome. In the last few weeks, we've gotten a lot of views on the latest uh, Zicky screencast. Uh, a lot of people joining the user group, uh, a lot of people, uh, tweeting and following the, the Zicky user. We were number one, one on Hacker News for about a day.
which really helps. Um, we've recently started shifting focus toward adoption, which is uh, you know, what that gem install Zicky is all about. And we're going to continue to make it easier to install um, and get up and running with. Zicky stands for uh, executable wiki. It's very wiki inspired. The first time I saw a wiki uh, many years ago, I was kind of blown away by the simplicity of it and how it broke all the rules. And uh, how it was a super simple solution that was way simpler than other alternatives like Word docs and file shares and uh, content management systems, which it kind of competed with and still sort of does. Um, if you're going to implement a wiki yourself, it's actually kind of easy. I don't know if you've done it. You just have to make a big text area and you search and replace for, you know, whatever, uh, equals dot star and add h1 tags around it and show it in the browser. Um, uh, you, you persist things to one giant text field, easy application design. Uh, since it's just a big text area, you just save it and reopen it. All your pages are on, in one namespace. Uh, very simple, very elegant. This uh, wiki idea of just a big text area uh, is kind of spreading. Twitter is a prominent example. Uh, in Twitter, you have a little text area that you can just go to town with. If you want to refer to someone, you just put at and then their username. You don't type a button or right click. Um, if you want to do a hashtag, you just put a pound. It's simple, users get it. Users are getting smarter these days. They're not uh, using their CD trays for uh, coffee anymore. Um, and once you've done this, you know, users can learn from other users. They can see a tweet and they can know how to do it. And you can, uh, like Twitter did, you can add GUI stuff uh, on top of the, the commands. Like in Twitter, if you type a, a username, it'll expand out afterward. So it's kind of a hybrid between GUI stuff and, um, and text. And uh, CRUD becomes trivial. If the user wants to delete this, they just select it and delete. If they want to copy and paste, they just copy and paste, et cetera. So Zicky is really applying this wiki idea of just a big text area with these characters with special meaning to executing things. That's really Zicky's kind of goal. So in wikis, you make a bullet point by beginning the line with uh, dash space. In Zicky, you run a command by beginning the line with dollar sign space. Ward Cunningham is the, the guy who invented the wiki. He's a really amazing guy. I've had the honor of, of chatting with over the last few months and, and brainstorming about Zicky and also some of the stuff that he's been working on, which, which is awesome. You should check out. Uh, this is a quote uh, from, from him. You don't have to uh, read the whole thing. I'll just highlight some of my favorite parts. I was obviously thrilled uh, that he gave this to me. Um, so next topic, let's talk about creating the menus in Zicky, which is the funnest part of Zicky. These last three are really short. Uh, not sure if we'll get through all of them. So using the existing menus, uh, like Bootstrap and Rails is, is pretty good in Zicky. It's pretty fun. But making your own is where Zicky really gets interesting because it's super simple and there's a super uh, simple um, uh, API. So the words that you type like Rails and double click on, those are called Zicky menus, uh, if you weren't uh, following my terminology. Uh, so when your interface is text, you can just type your interface. And by that I mean that when you mock something out, you're just typing nested menus and indenting with two spaces. And that is the same thing as your end product so the distinction between mocking stuff out and implementing the actual menu uh, goes away. So let's make an example um, subway menu. You already saw how we dragged a class into the menu directory in your home directory. Uh, now let's do it a different way. There are many ways to create a menu. Pretty much most things that you can think of that seem obvious, that seem to go along with this freeform text uh, zicky way of doing things. If it seems obvious, it probably works. Uh, so typing subway. Seems pretty obvious, let's try that and double click on it. It's telling us there's no subway menu yet and it gives us some options. Uh, let's pick the first one create here. And as we saw in the intro, it tells us, hey, just type a few things and type this keyboard shortcut. So let's give it a couple items, uh, station list, and let's give it an about, which will sort of be documentation. Um, and then we'll type the shortcut it told us and then the subway menu is there and we can use it anywhere including the web interface. Uh, so all that happened here behind the scenes is it created a file in the menus 
directory in your home directory, the menu directory, uh, named subway.menu, and it's just a text file, and it has this contents in it. I'll, I'll open the actual file so I don't confuse you. So this is the text file, that's the contents. This is just a Zicky way of showing file contents. And you could edit that and it would update the menu. Uh, one of the interesting things about making text-based menus is you can, in Zicky, is you can add things incrementally. Like let's say we wanted to do those first things and figure out what the menu should be and now we want to add something underneath about, uh, which is just some information. We can use our wiki syntaxes like greater than, can put URLs, so we can type that underneath and we can type the shortcut to save the menu and now we can actually use this menu. And then the station list menu, if we want to add an implementation, what's an obvious thing to try there? Let's just try to double click on it and see what happens. It tells us the menu does nothing yet and gives us an option to create a class. And if we double click on that, it gives us a default implementation and tells us to type a keyboard shortcut and now the uh, menu runs some Ruby code. And we could go use a gem to make a web service call to get an actual station list and we can jump back and edit the file. Um, one more example, let's make a menu to browse MySQL that is pretty much just like this menu. Uh, so it'll show you all your tables and then you could go in and show the contents of, of a table. Uh, I've already got a MySQL menu, so let's call this your SQL. Uh, so if we double click on that, it tells us there's, there's no menu and we can click here to make a class but let's do it a simpler way. Let's go uh, make a file uh, in the home directory. So it'll just be a class with the same name as the menu. Class, your SQL. Uh, I'll save it in the home directory in the menus directory, the menu directory. And it's just a standard Ruby class with no dependencies. So it's called uh, your SQL.rb. And the convention is there just needs to be one class menu. And whatever you return will be returned by the class. And the class menu is named menu. So if we save that and then double click on this, it will run the code. It's that simple. Um, now let's make it show the list of tables, like the real one. So we can, I'll go uh, consult my notes for my SQL and I'll find the command to run that. So here's a command that shows all, all the tables. You can double click to run it, make sure it works. Um, I'll copy it and then uh, stick it up here in back ticks. Uh, you could use a gem of course, but I'm lazy. So let's collapse and uh, rerun and we can see it works. Probably wanna get rid of this, but we won't bother for demonstration purposes. Uh, now if you double click on one of these, we want it to show the menu, right? I mean show the table rather. So let's go grab the SQL statement for showing a table, put it down here, and we'll make uh, a parameter up here, and the uh, menu will be passed in as a parameter, which is kind of an obvious way of doing it. Uh, the parameter is gonna be a table. Let's make it optional, and we'll say, we'll return this if there's no uh, table yet. Otherwise, we'll go down here, and we'll uh, run this and we'll pass in the table to the statement. So now if we run this and expand, it shows the results. If this was real, you'd probably wanna go search and replace up here to uh, put slashes at the end and probably like dashes at the beginning just cause it looks more gooey like that way. Here is a example of using a Zicky menu in uh, combination with a browser menu. This is kind of like uh, picking your character on the Wii. Um, so it's just, uh, when you run these, it's running Ruby code that just goes and tells the browser to run stuff. Uh, you can pick the hair. Unicorn hair is the coolest. <laughs> and uh, one interesting thing about uh, making text-only menus is you can add an item if you know it's gonna work or if you wanna make it work later. Uh, You can just add it in and then double click. <clears throat> if that guy ever knocks on your, your door and you open it and you see him, just turn around and run. Trust me. Uh, here's, here's an example of uh, a menu uh, that does some shoes stuff. 
you can uh, obviously call any Ruby code you want and use other uh, libraries. So here's a, a shoes program that will pop something up. You can encapsulate that into a uh, menu that just uh, takes you know, stuff from Zicky and displays it in a GUI way. Um, you can type Zicky slash menu name in your browser. Uh, we saw this earlier, so I went through it again. To, to browse in a mobile-like uh, way. So shell consoles are uh, referred to as REPL. Most of you probably know that term. It means uh, redevelop print loop, which usually means stuff gets appended to the bottom and you type and hit enter. Uh, Zicky, I've been calling a renew interface because you redevelop and then it nests under. Don't Google that, I just made it up. You won't find it. Um, side note, every time you can use the mouse in Zicky, you can also use the keyboard. The mouse is completely optional. Uh, I've gotten people kind of upset about the mouse use, but totally optional. Uh, this is an example of extending um, uh, a menu by subclassing. So we've seen the bootstrap menu that will let you make pages. Um, so what if you want a version like that, but that shows your logo at the top? I made a uh, Zicky strap logo that does the same thing, but just adds the, uh, uh, the logo, Z Zicky strap menu. And if you look at that class, it's just extending bootstrap, making a string, and uh, appending it to the output of this function. Very standard OO way of uh, extending things. Different ways of uh, creating menus. Here is a class with a string that, uh, let me actually make this a little bigger so you can, you can see all of it. Can you guys see that? It's a little small, huh? Um, this is a class with a string that's returned from the menu, and when you run it, Zicky will handle uh, calling the, uh, returning the right thing. So first, it, you can see down here, it returns fruit and nuts, and then if you drill into nuts, it will, uh, we'll call that. So it lets you declare menus without having to handle all of the uh, if-else. Here is a pi menu with a, uh, a method at the top that will print out some items, and when you double click on it, it'll return the top items, and then notice down here, the bottom one starts with a dot. That's your way of telling Zicky you want that to be a method call. So if you double click on nuts at the bottom, it will invoke this method named nuts, and return, in, insert the output. Here are two menus that work together. So there's a dot menu file, and then there's a, a drinks Ruby file that will take over uh, if the menu file can't handle it. So if you, uh, if you drill into one of these, uh, there's no child of smoothie up here, so it will delegate to the class. Uh, you can also use, you can also make menus with uh, JavaScript and uh, Python code as well. Um, here is a uh, very simple Ruby class with not only no Zicky dependencies like the other ones, but no conventions. So it's just a simple Ruby class with uh, two class methods, and Zicky will look at that when you double click on drinks, and it'll say like, oh, this is all I have, so I'll just use uh, the two methods as menus. And the simplest way of making a menu is in one line you say, hey, uh, if someone clicks on a line that starts with a exclamation mark or something, anything that matches a regex, you just uh, call this, pass the regex, and call a block that runs uh, when the user double clicks on that. Um, okay, really quick, taking notes uh, with Zicky. Zicky is a, a general purpose note uh, taking tool, which is pretty, pretty uh, decent, um, in addition to the other things that, that Zicky is. You just make text files that end in .notes, and then you add headings. So why don't I go over here and make a new uh, notes file for JavaScript, we'll say, and we'll say like running JavaScript on command line, which is uh, dollar sign JS, and then uh, a file. Uh, and you know you can make notes for whatever. And once you've made notes with these headings, these uh, headings let you search in them. You can also add uh, 
a bunch of other stuff like Google searches, uh, just by typing Google slash uh, JavaScript. And if you double click on that, it'll open the browser. I think I'm not connected to the internet. Um, we've seen uh, that you can add URLs. So uh, once you've made a file like this, you can type uh, to outline. It's a keyboard shortcut, control T, control O, bless you. And um, I'll actually go to my real JavaScript notes and type to outline, and you can see it just narrows down to the headings. And I can type to drill in, and then I can uh, look at examples, and I can run the examples. And if you're not in a file, if you're just somewhere else, you can type a keyboard shortcut to take you there, and then type to narrow down. So it's an easy way of, of navigating notes. Uh, there's an interactive learning mode where you can type facts and then type some facts separated by uh, colons. And you can double click to have it go through and quiz you with a flashcard process, which is very interesting to have in, in notes that you make. It's very effective. Any uh, automated memorization process is super effective uh, if you've got the stuff, the content. So you can type show answer and it will tell you the answer that it pulled from what we saw before. This is all just text. And if you got it right, it'll just move on. If you got it wrong, it'll come back uh, later and make you get it again. And it'll keep quizzing you until you get it. And then it'll go to the end. Uh, this is the learning process taken from memorize.com, which is a website that has a web-based version of this. Um, it's the memorize.com uh, learning process of memorize tables. Uh, full disclosure, memorize.com is one of my projects. Uh, all right, I think we might have time for the last two. Yeah, I think we do. Uh, so how about using Zicky as an IDE? Uh, you can take advantages of your existing text editor to um, split windows and uh, maybe make a, a file tree down here. I'll just make a file tree of uh, Zicky. Uh, and you know, maybe over here you're editing files, so if you double click here, it'll bring up the, the file. Up here you can, uh, you can put uh, unit tests. I'll just type tests and double click on it. It takes me to the unit tests. Um, you, can, you can navigate to the unit tests. You can split the window if, you're, if your editor supports it and uh, open a shell console down here and open IRB or whatever you would like. Um, You can do all kinds of other stuff using this basic textual uh, way of making trees to simulate uh, UI stuff that, uh, that IDEs do. Um, to create keyboard shortcuts in Zicky, which you don't have to do, this is optional. Um, it looks like this. It's the simplest way I could think of, of doing it. If you type this and add it to a Ruby file, it will define Control Z and it will make it run this block when you type the shortcut. You can also, of course, uh, use the existing shortcuts of your, of your editor that you're, you're using. Um, and I don't know if you can see this, but up here in the menu bar, there's a keys menu that's part of uh, the, the Emacs Zicky, and it's got a bunch of built-in shortcuts that are completely optional. They're kind of nice because they're all type the acronym. So if you want to split the window, it's the layout create, which means you hold down control and you type L and C. So the, the name of the shortcut is uh, the thing that you type, which I think is better than option, shift, F, et cetera. Uh, so layout create, layout hide, layout hide. Um, there are a bunch of different acronyms. So next topic. Um, thanks everyone for the interest in Zicky. I've gotten a lot of awesome interests in the last two months, which is, which is Really awesome after 11 years of, of no one caring. Um, <laughs> there have been some really, really good tweets to the uh, Zicky Twitter user, which I, I love. Um, there's been a lot of awesome Google group activity. I promise I'll get to all the uh, errors that people are getting soon. Um, if you have an open source project or a non-open source project, find me today or tomorrow. Let's sit together for 10 minutes and make a menu for your project. If you can think of a, a little admin interface or uh, interface that will go hit your web server, something like that. Uh, I love to pair program. I love to collaborate. Um, 
future Zicky plans. I want uh, to continue to make menus, get other people to make and contribute menus, and get them all into Zicky so that anything that you can type, uh, you can type it and double click on it, and it will either do something or, or it will redirect you to something useful. So eventually you can just sort of type anything. Um, more future plans of Zicky. Uh, I've got some ideas for uh, using Zicky as a, a web backend that uh, you can Ajax to, uh, to Zicky and speak in this menu language to handle your data and your navigation. Uh, and Rails, I've, I've got a lot, a lot of prototypes where you can embed menus into Rails apps. So what if it was a uh, model view controller menus? Could be kind of cool. Um, and Backbone, you know, you could make a Backbone page that just uh, did the UI and then did Ajax to the server to handle the, everything else. Unit tests, there's something uh, that's sort of in the works. I don't know what it is yet. But when you uh, use a Zicky menu, you've got text input and text output. That basically is all you need for a unit test, aside from some mocking, which could be put somewhere else. Uh, I've been toying with some ideas for that. If any of you guys have ideas, I would love to hear them. Uh, OS integration, wouldn't it be cool if you're in Mac OS and you could click into folders and then just keep clicking into a menu and navigate it. Uh, and you know, if you can type to make a menu that you can browse in your web browser, why not just auto generate, generate an iPhone app? Uh, which I don't know how to do, but uh, maybe someone will do that. Or maybe I'll, I'll learn iOS. Um, so one thing that keeps me motivated about Zicky uh, is that it gets simpler over time. It's, it, uh, becomes more, more elegant and there are obvious next steps for things that you can do to, to simplify it that pop up all the time. Like a friend of mine said like, hey, you've got all these menus you can type. Why not do like a Quicksilver thing where you've got a global shortcut and you can type IP and then it pops up and shows your IP. So did that. Uh, any of you guys that have random thoughts about where to take this next menus to create, I'd love to hear them. So hopefully the uh, future Zicky plans include your ideas. That's it. Questions? Are you a witch? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. No, I'm not. Uh, Yuda. Okay, so, uh, really cool. Thank One you. thing that I noticed was that it seems like you have a pretty big DSL embedded in text strings for doing stuff. I understand the desire not to have a dependency on Zicky stuff, but it also seems like having a Ruby DSL to make you make use of the ADB. Yeah, I, I uh, think that could be, could be, could I repeat that? Having a Ruby DSL for making menus would be really convenient versus instead of having giant strings and DSLs all over the place. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think that would be very interesting. Uh, the approach I've kind of taken with Zicky is like, if I think of something and it seems fun and it seems simple, then it should be done. Uh, so yeah, there, there are some things in Zicky menus that are sort of like Zicky uh, conventions, like you, you can type a label with dash hey, and that's useful enough to be a, a, a Zicky wide convention. If you if you run this, it just passes in the uh, value after the label, not the, the menu. And that's general enough that it should be probably global to Zicky. But there are other things that are you know really useful and should be accessible somewhere. And there's some things you could just do yourself for your own little specific menu, like the piano menu. Like for example, you mentioned like you might want to copy like do a find or replace on this C my SQL thing to add dashes. Like that seems like a thing that there should be a library for. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, someone should make a, a menu for that. <laughs> uh, yes. How, how well does it play with uh, RVM and RVM and all that? That was one of the bottlenecks we got over two months ago, thanks to my friend Caleb, who knows way more about that than I do. It works pretty well with RVM. <laughs> uh, you. I want to take this offline, but I need to talk to you about uh, Zikia. Ruby dependencies. Okay. Uh, I, I just broke stuff. <laughs> so you got it working and you broke it. Okay, it, you're not alone. <laughs> uh, white shirt. Any specific Emacs you know, uh, configuration files that collide with it, either in key mappings or in any other way that we should avoid, or that we just need to kind of configure so that there isn't a clash. I ran into a collision with the Viper shortcuts. 
that could probably be gotten around if you use those. Um, it tries really hard to not collide uh, with the default Emacs shortcuts if you're using Emacs for Zicky. Uh, the way that works is it uh, uh, uses a bunch of characters as a prefix. If you want to type the uh, Emacs equivalent, it will, um, you just type like control A twice and it will do the normal control A. Um, I should probably wrap it up so the next speaker can get in, in here, but uh, find me after. I'd love to talk. Thanks so much.